is yours, my friends. Okay. Now, you don't need me here, do you? I mean, I can get rid of me. You no, you have to stay there, Paul. You just keep going. No, I mean, you don't need. Do you need my picture? Your is face? No, you can you can stop sharing your video if you want, so we don't see. We, you. we I, see your picture. Your yeah, screen is shared. The light is very bright in my eyes. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So what we have over here is a tulip. And I find that everybody takes pictures of flowers in normal, ordinary ways. And I like to look at something different. Well, in the tulips, they, the petals start to fall apart. And as they fall apart, the, uh, let me give me. So as they fall apart, they also start to curl and crinkle and so this uh, picture was taken over in Meadowbrook. Meadowbrook is northern Baltimore. I think they have about 80,000 tulips there every year. Um, it's a gorgeous park, wonderful place to go visit. And so this is one of the tulips and it broke in half. So I took this picture along with some others, but let's see. All right. So now what I do is I put it now into Lightroom and I do like using Lightroom. It really doesn't matter what program you use as long as you get used to it and that's the one that you like. But I like Lightroom. So I'm going to go into the develop module. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to see things. Now one thing about I, I love flowers because they're colorful. They're um, I don't know they remind me of things. There's the beauty of the yellows to the reds, the green, the green is peaceful, the red is more like love and fiery and the, the yellow is subduedness and they all have these tremendous geometric shapes and that's what we want to uh, keep and they're very defined the petals so the petals are defined, the colors are pretty well defined everything in it. Um, thing is that when you're taking things in nature and all and out on gardens you don't have the ability to let's say do something with the background or fill in these spaces or get rid of the dust and, and the pollen that's on the flowers. So one well, first things I'll do is I go from uh, Adobe Standard and most of my work is outdoors and so I use it the landscape and you, you saw the difference how it changed. I'll go back again. Are you able to see those the difference there? Somebody give me a yay or an A. Yeah, more contrast. Okay, so more color, more contrast. And uh, then I do build up the contrast a little bit. And as I do, you'll see the background goes down. If you take a look over here at the uh, histogram, you'll see that it gets a more of a U shape in it. Uh, I bring my highlights down a bit. And then I'm going to bring my shadows. And I'm, I go back and forth, and I want to see... If I lighten it too much, I don't like that. I want to bring because I'm going to darken that background. The other problem with shadows, it's the area between the white and the black. And if you really open it up big, you can wind up giving yourself a little white line. Um, the whites, and you just go back and forth. A lot of times I go to the biggest and then bring it back, big and bring it back. And the same thing with the blacks. Go down. When I do, this gets muddy over here. So you saw this is a dark area. This is dark, but there's a nice contrast between the two of them. So I want to keep that. Uh, the texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance, I'm going to leave that for later. So at this particular point, I'm going to be taking this um, into Photoshop. Um, you can see up here, by the way, that, that I have over here, it's called lens correction. So normally I put on lens correction and enables getting rid of some chromatic aberrations. Uh, this was taken probably about four years ago. I probably have to look it up. It's taken with my Nikon. And the second thing I normally do is do a transform. So I, I straighten it up. This is pretty straight. Um, so I'm happy with the way this thing looks at this present time. So with that, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, Command E, and that should bring me over to Lightroom, which it has. 
So it just transferred me to Lightroom. Um, so I'm looking at it here now. And when I look at it, some of the things, one of the big thing that I see right away, to me, it feels like it's crowded. It feels just very, very, very crowded. So what I'm gonna do before I start to do anything else is I'm gonna look over here in my images. I'm gonna go down to image size and I'm gonna go to inches. This is a very big file. Normally I do work in these big files, but for this particular thing where it's a demonstration, I wanna move it quicker. I'm gonna cut this down and I'm gonna take it down percentage wise. Uh, I'm gonna go about 25%. And then I hit control O, so it brings it up again. So this, this will make it so the demonstration goes a little faster. Then I go over here to image size, control O minus, I'm gonna go to image, canvas size, and it's right in the middle. Um, my width is five inches. I'm gonna probably, what I wanna do is probably double everything. So once again, percent, I'm gonna do 200. And the color I'm gonna give it is something in this background. So it's gonna make me work easy. So I just clicked on that. I have to say, okay. There, control O again. That's rather big, but I can cut it down. We'll just do it again. Image, canvas size. Okay, we'll not go relative. We'll just go here. We'll change it to 10. And let's do eight. Bring there. Okay. So now I have a little bit of working room. I'm going to probably cut this down afterwards, but I want to keep it for now. So with my background, I'm doubling my background. I'm going to go in here. I want to isolate the flower. Today, isolating uh, flowers or isolating people has become a lot easier. We can go into object over here. It says object selection. And you have, when you do object selection, if you come up here, you can either do a lasso or a rectangle. In this particular case, I'm going to do a lasso. So I'm coming in. I'm going to do a lasso. And it's a nice leaf forming lasso. Let go of it. And voila, it's just absolutely amazing. I'll increase the size of that so you can see how amazing this is. And it's still, you can see we're off here in the, the little nooks and crannies, the little crotches here. Here, It's a common thing that that happens. The green is in here. So I can add this, it's still with a plus on it. And I have to go to a larger size, let it go, and boom, there it is. Let's join that together. And let's bring this in. And we're gonna bring this in. Okay, so, and there's a little spot here. By the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, and it's a Pro, and uh, if you get a new one, get the Pro series. So if I hit the option key, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, the little cursor went from positive to negative. And I go down and I have to go bigger than the area and then let go. And then, it, so now I have to add positive. Come on. There we go. A little bit there. Okay, we might have to do that. Okay, so over here, I have to add. And I always get it confused there. So if it's not one way, it's the other. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is though, I'm gonna use my lasso tool. I'm gonna hit my plus plus, coming in and, and I'm gonna add the water drop. 
And then I'm going to go around quickly. And if it's not one way, it's the other. If you make a mark, it's not good. Just hit the escape and it's supposed to erase it. Escape, escape. No, come on. Escape. No, no, no. There we go. Look down here. I want to get more of that. There. Let's get this in. Around. Quickly check it. Now this in the past would have taken me an hour. Looking around, looking around. I think it's just fantastic. Okay. Here, there, okay. So I'm happy with this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on its own layer. So Command J. So now it's on a layer all by itself. If I turn off these other two, you can see it. If I wanted, I could put solid color underneath this. And that's white, you can go with black, you know. So you can see what it actually looks like if you want. I don't care to do that right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here. We're gonna go on to our background copy. And what I want to do is bring out, close up these black things, and I'm going to take my brush tool. If I hit Option Control and slide it to the right, it gets bigger. To the left, it gets smaller. If I go up, it gets softer. Go down, it gets harder. Well, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. When you do that extraction, are you doing it at 0% feather? I noticed you didn't like giving any kind of feathering. No, no, no feather. No reason to feather that. And the same thing, when you turn on your lasso tool, like here's my lasso tool, up here is zero feather. If you put a two feather on it, you're not really getting precise, you're getting fuzz. So that's why I do that. Okay, so here, now, if I put my brush over here, and so there, there are a couple of, I'm doing a down and dirty background. So what I'm gonna do is I hit my color that I want over here, and we're going to bring up, normally I use a lower flow. Okay, so on this part up here, you see where it says multiply, now it says normal. So this is the mode for your brush. That's your brush mode. Over here, this is for the entire image. So I use a lot of, uh, and I guess Sandra Pierce was a person who got me involved with just using, a, you know, that brush mode. So I'm gonna take a color right there, and we're gonna bring it up. Now you, you notice how it's not touching the picture, and that's because we did a, okay, so if I take this and I can bring it up, okay. get the red if you want, green, so, you know, we can make a background, make a, a funny background if we want, or whatever, get the brush a little bit bigger. I'm just doing some just doing some splatter here, splatter there. But you want to cover your entire canvas. like I'm back in 
grade school. Now, if you notice, if I turn this on, it's still there. Flower, hasn't been touched. Um, the brightness on the top leads me out of the scene. So I'm gonna, I can actually turn this to, let's see if we turn it to multiply. And if I pick up some of this yellow, whoops, you see how dark that gets. So when I use those, I normally run around 20 for opacity. And I'm just holding the paintbrush very lightly. And at this point, I'm just going to stop because you can do this for hours to get yourself. And I'm going to go to my filter. I'm going to go to a Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blend it. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go another layer here because I want to get some more green. Because green and red are complementary colors. And you see, because I got such a, a nice mask over there, I can go right into the, the parts. And we still on multiply. Now I'm going to just turn this on to screen. And once again, I'm going to go and filter Gaussian blur. So it's going to blur it out. Let's see what it did any difference. Yeah. So there it was too light. And there I'm giving myself a little bit more green. Um, I'll make another layer yet. And let's see what's on the screen. Yeah, this, this bright yellow, it, it's too distracting. All right, so I'm gonna put these together and just hit shift and then command G. And I'll put that for painted background. All right, so the next thing I'm looking at is anything that really disturbs me and right now what disturbs me is I don't have a stem for the flower. Um, and stems can make or break a painting or a picture or whatever it is. So uh, I'm going to make sure that, okay, now one other thing. I found that sometimes I all of a sudden am painting and I don't even know where I am. But if I'm on this layer and I, I sort of finish this, I'm going to put a little lock on it. And that way, if by mistake I go back on that layer, it, it's not going to be affected. And I'm also going to lock up my, um, my mask. And by the way, I'm going to take this, I'm going to make it active. There we go. And to make it active, all you do is do a command click, and then I go into selection, and I'm going to save it and I'll call it flower. Why do I do that? <laughs> uh, to save it because a lot of times all of a sudden things go bad or I need to get the flower afterwards. So to get rid of the marching ants, I hit a command D like so. Uh, I'm above now my flower layer and I'm gonna get myself a new extra layer. I'm going to hit R to rotate my canvas, keep my finger down. So if I keep my finger down and I touch my thumb to the space bar, it moves it over. Now I release it and now I'm back to my original um, tool. If I release, if I take this and I move it and then I let go, you see the 
rotates stays on. So there's certain keys that you, when you push down, if you hold them down like this, then you can do your movements, you can change your tools. So there's a brush tool, there's a smudge tool. Go back to that. Um, now we're going to increase the size a bit. Plus, plus, plus. It's so the reason I, I changed the um, the rotation of it is that uh, my wrist can only go so far, and I can only I like to make smooth motions like so. Okay, if I'm up and down, my elbow goes out, and you know, so rotate the canvas as much as you can. So I, I want to go ahead and make um, a, a stem here. Now we're not going to use all of this, but I'm going to bring the stem out to about here. Uh, if you want, you can go to your pencil tool and make it a little bit bigger. And it's on there. And it's at 100%, but we're going to just too bright. We're going to outline a stem. Now, if I was smart, I would have taken other pictures of other tulips, and um, which I did, by the way, and I can use their parts. So now, if Underneath this, make a brush. We're going to get this green. It's a green blue. And this color is different than this. This is a green yellow. There's a green blue. Uh, I'm going to cut my opacity to 100. My brush is going to be good. And I'm going to turn my. I, I like painting more with flow where I have to go over it. So I'm sort of blending this color into the one on top. And if I go to the top one here, if I get rid of that, you see that just gets rid of that right away. So now here, and to show you, Okay, if now I just take this and I go to multiply, and I have to be on about 20. And we're going to get there. So I look at the shading on, on here and trying to see which way the light is coming from. And it looks like it's it's basically coming from above here. There's no predominant left or right. And in the middle part, I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to use my uh, eraser tool. Make an edge. Let's see if this works with this. Now if I hit it here, it does. So what I do is I, I touch it once, put it down, and hit shift, click. Hello, where'd you go from? Here we are. Oh, okay. Let's get rid of this. 
that over here. And if we want to see it, we can turn all this stuff off. Okay, so now you can see I didn't really connect these two. I'm going to have to come back to that. I'm over here. And let's see if I can go all the way down. Woo! One big sweep. Now let's get rid of all that. I'm using the eraser on this because I'm not going to use need these parts again. But I normally do not use erasers, I use masks. Okay, so now we're coming back onto here. And we're going to get our brush tool again, make it smaller. And I can change the shape of the brush tool, by the way. So you can make it into a little egg and turn it on its side. And let's see, that was the color there, and we were on multiply. Um, I got to be careful because if I'm, if I take this color, which has really been the multiplied color and I add it to it, it's going to be multiplied twice. I want to make another layer. It doesn't seem to be, oh, there, 21, okay. Let's turn up the flow a bit. There we go. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir. I see you have different layers of painting. I guess that's just for different modes or like this multiplying screen mode? Yeah. Okay. Where is that? You mean well, I see that here? you have different layers of painting. I'm trying to. Okay, so that's the brush itself. Okay. But I see a layer five, layer six. Yeah, layer five is, is it's normal, six, normal. Okay. So that those are normal layers. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to come in here. I still want to add a little bit of darkness in here. I don't know if that answered your question. Well, my question is why'd you, I see you have multiple layers, I guess, for different types of paint or. Multiple layers? Yeah. yeah well, I'll start doing something new. I like to add a new layer to it. I'm a layer freak. Okay. That's uh, fine. You've answered my question. Yeah. Some people like to use no layers. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and switch over to the uh, mixer brush. And for this demonstration, for most purposes, I just use the soft round. And once again, I'm going to take a new layer now because I'm changing modes. Um, let's see if I can. I can't, so I'm not going to do that yet. And I'm going to go to Control O, and when I hit Escape, it turns it back. Um, it undoes all the rotation. So over here, you can see there's a little bit of darkness that's in here. Um, if I had my eraser tool again. Okay. 
And so everything I'm doing, by the way, is, um, I hate to say it, but I'm trying to do it as quick as I can to get through. And I want to add a little bit of yellow. Let's get it back to normal. We're going to add this type of yellow down in here. So most of this is going to be cut off when we're finished. By using a very low opacity, or you can go to a very high opacity, and what I like to do is a low flow. So when I do that, it's more like paint brushing. I don't want to spend too much more, but normally I spend a lot of time on fixing this thing up to make it look more and more real. But then at the end, we wind up cutting it off anyway. So I hit escape again. And I'm going to take these and put all of these together in a group. Command G. And I'm going to call that STEM. Double click on it. I like to use capitals S T E M. There. Okay. Now, if I bring back my painted background, I have seen. And now down here, you see the little dark stuff. And if I actually went back into my stem thing, um, I did my eraser. That's uh, not going to work like that. No. Okay, I'll leave that for now. I'm not going to put around. Okay. So that's stem. S T E M stem. Okay. So now. <clears throat> when I start looking at the flower, I look at the petals and I see this one's turning in, this one's turning over, this one's up. We're only dealing with four petals. Um, and I like to start with the back petals and work my way up to the front petals. So in this case, it would be this one here, this three, four, then I would come in and do the pistols and then the top part here with the stamen. And then this is the connection where it used to be the other petals. Uh, for the demonstration here, I'm going to start and I'm going to use, and go mainly with this petal. And I'm going to turn it on its side a little. So I'm looking at it and what I want to see, let's get ourselves a new layer. Okay, so what I'm gonna to have to do is enhance the darks and the lights. And every place where there's a dark next to it is a light. So if you go too dark on something, it doesn't look good. But if you darken this up and lighten that, you darken this up, you lighten that, you're gonna to have to put the edge back onto here. Over here, it's white. We're going to have to bring in some yellow. And it's not like there isn't white in the flower, but my eye is drawn down into that. The same thing here. So we're going to have to do uh, painting with color. And then, so your painting is done with the paintbrush and your uh, um, smearing, I call it, is done with the mixer brush and also with. Um, the finger, what is it? The, uh, what do I call that? The uh, smudge tool. Smudge tool. Smudge tool. Yeah. Okay. So over here, you can see if we, we're going to have to redevelop the edges. So, first thing is back to the uh, brush, make it a little bit bigger, low flow. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start out with darkening a bit. So to darken, I'm going to have to pick out my areas over here. So here I am. The brush is on darken already. It's just little movements, and it's the slow buildup. 
And this is the tedious part because it's just a slow buildup that goes on. And over here, this is going to be darker than that side. And the yellow is going to be a little bit darker. And around the white, we definitely want to get to see that better. And the way we do that is by darkening up a little bit. And we're at six. I want to get it down more. Three or four, I like. Okay. Okay, we want that a little bit darker. Um, and over here, I'm going to paint in that yellow. Now, everybody who does painting does it a little differently. You will not find two artists doing the same thing the same way. We'll see what we did. So you can see just by this what we're getting. Next, I'm going to do some lightning. I'm going to go to screen mode. I'm going to pick this. I'm going to lighten up here. Lighten down in there. was a little bit too much. So I'm going to lighten that up a bit. So time goes real quick. Was it 640 already? going to go to a little bit of a multiply. If you make a brush bigger, you won't get as much streakiness. Now you can cut that back. And then if we want, we can come in with this smudge tool. Once again, um, the wetness means how loose it, it's like if you did water painting, if you put water down on top of your paper first and it allows how much you're gonna mix it up. Um, these things, not too much, but over here with your flow, if I keep the flow really down, I can, Basically, I'm painting in, I don't know if you see it blending in. I don't know how much you can pick up on your screen. I don't want to get you guy. Okay, and by pushing it down, what you're doing is you're grabbing color and you're bringing it in. Now, there's a lot of texture in the flower and I don't want to get rid of the, the textures. Go with the grain. If I used a heavier flow, let's say if I was up here at 100, you see what it does, it obliterates 
He just smears it big, big time smear. And sometimes you need that, especially if you're going to be doing, let's say, wedding dresses or something. Um, so over here, you saw how it's painting now outside of the uh, the picture. But if I take the So we can back it up. Okay, so if I turn on, come on, there. So if I turn this on, I go up here, and so I can, I hide it, so it doesn't bother me. And now you see, I'm gonna use the major schmearer. And you see, it's, it's not gonna happen because it just stays in. So I don't like getting rid of everything like that. So I'm just gonna back this up. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple of things. So that's, you do some blending it. Everybody does it differently and you're gonna have to, you know, pick out your own little technique that you like. How you blend it. Uh, I'm going to take and I'm going to get this bigger. And we're going to go up here. We're going to make a real small brush. I'm going to make it a little harder. And it's going to be a brush. I don't want to pick this nice light color. And I'm going to, okay, so I'm using pen pressure. And I keep picking up nice light color. And the colors change, so you're going to have to keep changing in colors. And when I'm using this uh, low flow, by rubbing it back and forth, that will give me more opacity. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay, if that's not light enough, I go here, I go higher and brighter, I'll get there. Okay, so there we go. So this is gonna give us the edge of the leaf. And while I'm in here, we have this little curl. And the curl, oh, and we also have areas that didn't really get color in them. Sometimes you don't know this until you get real close. Let's give this a little color here. And we're gonna go back to that and we're gonna make it lighter and brighter. And then in this area, we're gonna go and we're gonna make it a little bit darker. Follow the contours.
You see, I'd rather go, you know, people say, why don't you use dodge and burn? Well, because it gets muddy and I'd rather use the real color that's there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my uh, blender brush. And what you do is you pull it out to the edge and you bring it back and you keep, and you'll figure it out which way you go and do you bring dark into light or light into dark. Uh, most of the time I bring the the dark out a little bit, but you bring the light into the dark. The dark is overwhelming. Um, shadows are not, you know, you want to keep them nice and soft. So they're not clearly delineated. In a second, we'll step back and show you a little bit. Okay, while I'm here, I'm going to care of this. This doesn't have any color in it. Here's a nice dark line. Let's bring this down. Gives it some definition. Come on. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. This is without it and this is with it. Let's go bigger. So that's without and that's finishing with. And you can see this takes quite a bit of time. And the same thing with, let's say, I'll, I'll just do one of the same. Do we have time there, Danny? Are you there? No, your time, Paul. Go right ahead. Okay. So let's, um, are we paying him by the hour? Yeah, I'm getting paid by the hour. Uh -huh. Okay. So over here, screwed up a little bit. You see, you have to bring the colors in on both sides. Now go for a bigger brush and I'm going to change the shape of it. And somehow the flow got up there. That's a big problem, isn't it? Down still more. I'll come in here. First off, where is this layer here? 12. And we're going to bring it back a little. Okay. So now I'm going to change the shape of my brush again. I'm going to make it smaller. And we're going to increase the flow for this. bit of a lightness, darkness. Now if we really want to get a sharp edge on this, we'll go more to the smudge tool. And make sure it isn't on finger painting. And with the smudge tool, to get the edges in, you go perpendicular. Thank you. 
You see how we can also get rid of all your little pollen, etc. You can go through the whole thing. Boom, 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 boom. Keep this pretty high. I have it at 88 to 90, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, now to get We'll get this up there a little. Increments left, right, left, right. Okay. I'm going to make it smaller again. And I'm going to change the shape like so. Come on. Come on, baby. There you go. Okay. And we're going to make a couple of pieces of pollen stick out. Scatter it around. Don't don't do anything. Then like you get rid of you. So like I said, th there's no reason to get you know a ton of brushes. Not to say that they wouldn't help. When you did painting, Danny, how many brushes did you use? He's asleep. Danny. I hear you, Paul. How many brushes did you use when you painted? When I'm, when I'm painting, you mean a, a real painting? Yeah, yeah. Three or, three or four, maybe. Yeah. How many do you have? Three or four. I don't have many. <laughs> OK. I, I don't have a bunch of specialty brushes. That basically, you know, we have larger bristle brushes. and. Right. Depending on the area that you cover, you know, it, it depends. But there's not, I don't have 125 brushes in my, in my art bin. Good. Okay. So now I'm going to do a little rotation again. And I'm going to come down to the edge. Just clean it up. So these little drops, even though, you know, they're nice to have the drops, but they do draw the eye out. Okay. So let me get rid of that. This, a little bit of there. So I, I think you can understand the, the gist of what um, we're doing here. Go back to Original flower. The big thing is fixing up these curls, fixing up this curl that could take me 45 minutes to an hour, fixing up this to get another 45 minutes. Um, hey, Paul, that's awesome. Um, we are no. closing in on seven o'clock. Do you want to continue a little bit or do you want to? I can just want to show one more thing and okay. Then, okay. So now I'm going to put these layers together again. Yeah, I get over time. Right. Maybe grind there. Call that uh, whatever. Um, okay, so we're going to save it. So it's Command Shift S to save. And I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it its name. Caps. Inner to you. Inner to I put a dash and I go oh, 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 001. And that way each time I save it, I'll go oh, 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 002. Etc. So now when I go back into, and to go back into uh, Lightroom, if you hit Command Tab, you'll see you have all your programs that are open or out there. And if you just hit the Tab button, you go through them. But I want to go back into Lightroom. So here I am back in Lightroom. And the reason I want to go here is because I'm going to grab a hold of this texture. 
I'm going to bring that back in. If I put my V up, my V2 move tool, and we're over here at inner tulip. Bring it up, bring it right down to the middle, hold my shift, command T. I'm going to spread this out. I'll put command O. Okay, and with this, yeah, it's a little bit high, but I like to go beyond the border and just do a click on it. We're going to turn that into, let's take a look at soft light. Okay, now if we take and here is, I want to go the other way. Okay, so that's the first texture of putting a texture in. Now you can do anything you want to do to these textures. In other words, this is the texture. You can go over here. You can do a curves with it. So you can brighten it up. You can darken it. You can do it. And you see, I'm just basically working on the texture. And as I do, it, it it's... Uh, So by pushing this little, I can make a, a clipping mask. If I don't want to do a clipping mask, take it off. And you can see how you will change what you see in the picture. So that's one texture. And if you can always add on a second texture, that would be, let's say, this one. Command D, bring it in. Your V, your move tool, take it up, drop it in, command T, and spread it out. I like to get those edges in there. And I save a whole bunch of different textures, lots and lots of them. So here, and let's see. Okay, just for the fun of it, we're going to put it right into overlay mode. So that was texture two. I'll just show you a different way of um, getting out. Uh, if I make a lasso and come in here. And if we go up here to filter, we go to Gaussian blur, and we hide it. And you can see how that basically, you, you can wipe out by, and you can bring back some of the texture if you want. You can bring it all out. So there it comes back, and I want to get rid of it. But it's on the edges, and it's blending it in. So that's just a, a little thing. Um, there are many, many things to do with this. And like I said, it can take hours and hours. This is just a different rendition that I did before. Um, is that the same flower, Paul? Yeah. So yeah. you literally could spend yeah. 20 hours on an, an image if you wanted to. Correct. I, I did this in the afternoon from about 1.30 till 3.30. And I, I didn't have to talk to anybody, but, you know, and I didn't finish it. All I, all I had was this done, the pistols, the, the stamens. I was just getting into this. So that was like two and a half hours to get here and here done. Yes. Terrific to watch you work, Paul. So I, that is entertaining. I could watch you work all day. Yeah. So one of the things I, I found when I took the different courses that I take is that watching the instructor work to me was more um, 
more instructional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like, it's like uh, when I used to do surgery, you, you know, you learn by looking at the surgeon and, and watching 25 surgeries. And eventually he says, here, hold this, and, you know. And yep. it's just that repetition over and over and over again. Bruce, you got a nice light on you. I don't know. <laughs> is that you or is that just He's your being picture? really, that's, that's just me. I think that's Bruce's picture. But Bruce down there, he look, he, he's not even moving. Look at that. I think it's his, he, he, he just stuck a picture in and went to the band. I know. There, <laughs> here, look, now he's in a big here, theater. I'm look at that. Talk, you know, yeah. Oh, there you go, Bruce. <laughs> the theater is empty. That's good. Yeah. Hey, Paul, <laughs> there's uh, – I'm sorry, Bruce. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Paul, there's a lot of thank yous in the in the Zoom chat group there. The two group chat, they're saying thank you for your time and beautiful work. And okay, well, love the present, they love their presentation. Yeah. Where do they send their money to? Uh, Post office box 333, <laughs> Secaucus, New Jersey. <laughs> Does anybody have any last minute questions for Paul? We need to get him out of here. He's got to go eat dinner. I'm fine. I can any anything anybody want to ask. Well, the only thing I can say is just take classes. There are a, a lot of good online classes, and there are a lot of uh, and, and you know you, sometimes you get to pay for them, and then there's a lot of live classes that are out there. Um, I, I would even suggest taking a physical painting class at a local oh, yes. arts place. Like we have the Torpedo Factory, which is close to me. And to physically go paint on a canvas will really help you in this realm as well. And so I think that's a big thing to do. In the bedroom, I have those two books on, on painting of flowers. Can you, can you see? Let, me, let me just show you two books that I found okay. very, uh, very useful. Huh? Yeah, yeah, see if they're, if they're not, they're not. So in one of the paint books, um, they describe painting. And when you paint, if you're a righty, you have the light coming in from the left. And you paint in that fashion. Otherwise, you're going to get the shadow of your, your hand on uh, as you paint. And that, that's Rembrandt lighting because it has to come in from the top left so that you can paint. If it came in from the top right, you have a shadow. So that was the reason I think that the top light was there for Rembrandt and for other artists. So yeah. I don't know what you think about that, Dan. You don't think it's because that's kind of the direction you're used to seeing the light coming from the sun? It, it could be that way. Um, but in particular, this guy, he recommended that when you do your painting, that the light be on the left and uh if you're righty and if you're a lefty that the light comes in from the right right that makes sense from yeah. the, the left right side yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely depending on what hand you paint with cool yeah. i find that oh. was photoshop too <laughs> well there yeah. are some people that you know switch up their keyboards because they're left-handed and right-handed so correct it's the same thing the yeah. other thing you know th this is the wacom pen and the mm -hmm. big thing with the Wacom pen is you got to make sure you have good nibs and you should change them frequently. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you don't, it doesn't slide. It should slide and go nice and smooth. Well, anyway, I guess Hazel can't find the bro the two books I was talking about. Um, you kind of sprung it on her. Let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, just do us a favor, Paul. If you, if you think about it, you know, just take a picture of them and put them in the uh, Maryland PPA group and we'll see them. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, that sounds like a good deal. Paul, thank you so much for your time and, you, and talents. I okay. so much appreciate you, man. Thank you. And Have a good night. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Right. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Uh, good night, Paul. Thank you. Good night, Paul. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Hi, Danny. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night, night. Aunt Looney. Good night. Good night, John boy. Good night. Good night, Hazel, wherever you are. Good night, Danny. Good night, I'm ending the meeting, people. Have a good night. Wherever you are. Good night, Miss Calvin. Okay.